It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Niners and the Seahawks on Thursday night. From the picturesque Pacific Northwest and the city of Seattle, welcome inside Lumen Field, where all the 12s make it at home for the Seahawks. Thanks for having us in, Mike Tirico, Greg Olson, ready for this battle in the NFC West, a division of haves and have-nots of late, division that's produced the NFC representative to the Super Bowl for four, Greg, of the last six years. Yeah, it's very top-heavy, and it's really interesting to see kind of how that baton has been passed. San Francisco and L.A., they've really been the bell of the ball over the most recent years, but it wasn't very long ago that the best team in football arguably was the Seattle Seahawks. And then you look what's going on down in Arizona. They probably surprised some people last year. They feel like they have their long-term stability at the quarterback position with that new staff. So I wouldn't be surprised if halfway through this year we look at the NFC West and say, huh, this is one of the better divisions in football. A good return as he takes it across the 30. The Seahawks come on, and that means it's Geno Smith. What a story he's been. Real turnaround here in his 12th year now in the NFL. Came out to Seattle, backed up Russell Wilson the last three years. Greg, he has been the starter, and he runs this Seattle offense now. You just can't say enough about Geno and his turnaround over the last couple years, Mike. I mean, many thought he was destined to just be a career backup and just play out the rest of his career. And when things didn't play out at first, instead of just listening to those doubters, he just kept working on his craft. And next thing you know, he gets an opportunity with a new team, makes the most of it, and he's now solidified himself as a bona fide franchise quarterback in this league. They'll work now on second and four. Smith. Oh, intercepted on the second play of the game. And he's going to give a short field to his offense here as they try to break the top. So anytime a team suffers an early setback like that interception, human instinct says, Mike, we need to get away from our game plan. We need to adjust. I don't think that's the case. There's a lot of game left, a lot of chances to avenge that play and still connect downfield on some of these passes. All proven, though, Mike, they've got to identify what went wrong. Let's correct it so we're able to move forward. Here come the 49ers, and they are led by Brock Purdy. You know the story taken last in the 2022 draft the last two seasons. He has led the Niners deep in the playoffs, and it's his third season, Greg, as the QB for San Francisco. Mr. Irrelevant. Well, I think it's safe to say, Mike, he has been anything but irrelevant since arriving in the NFL, and he is living proof. It doesn't matter if you're drafted first overall, or in his case, with the very last pick. What does matter is what you do with the opportunity once it's given to you. Nothing real flashy about his game. He simply gets the job done, and that's exactly what his team is counting on him today over these next 60 minutes. They'll break the huddle. It's second and five. They'll run. This is Jordan Mason. And he's close to the first down. Gets four yards on the gain, but it will bring up third down. Now, following the run, one of the offensive linemen leading the way is a bit shaken up. And as the medical staff looks him over, we'll step aside. And a yard. Here's Purdy making the read and keeping it. And the 49ers are going to have a first and goal coming up 
as they find a way to convert on third and one. I think this is something we're going to continue to see today, Mike, as this game goes along. They're going to make the defense make a decision. Do you want to account for the running back or do you want to account for the quarterback? In this case, they choose the running back and the quarterback makes them pay. And he'll take it on in. Brandon Ayuk, touchdown, 49ers. Now Jake Moody for the extra point. He knocks it through. And the 49ers will take a 7-0 lead. So, following that touchdown, Moody is back out to kick it off. Here's Williams on the return. And he'll be brought down past the 25. Decent field position to start this drive. The Seahawks offense ready to get going with their second possession. They had that pick on the opening drive. It led to a touchdown. So, 7-0 the deficit as they get the ball back first and 10. First and ten. On the bootleg, it's Smith. Outright Smith and Jigba has it. After the catch, he gets that forward for a gain of nine. Second and a yard. Here's Walker. And he'll work forward for a yard, but that's all he needed. This is going to be a first down. This offense, they're not interested in taking the deep shot here. Second and short, the way they're running the ball, pound the rock, reset the downs, and just keep the drive alive. Line of scrimmage is the 37-yard line for first and 10. We'll keep it on the ground and keep it with Walker. That lane closes quickly. A pickup of three. Linebacker Fred Warner brings him down. They face second down and seven. A shotgun run now with Walker. And he'll be marked down at the 45-yard line. And a nice pickup there by the back with an explosive run play. And it's important to point out, Mike, this offensive play caller, he's still working off that opening script. It doesn't necessarily have to just be the first possession. Using formations, using run game and pass. Unmask the defense and understand where to take the play calling as the game unfolds. And he'll get this to the 43-yard line. Linebacker Fred Warner brings him down. Second down and eight. Here's a handoff to Walker. And they bring him down, but not until they get inside the 30-yard line. This offense has to be thrilled, Mike, with the success they've had here on the ground in this opening quarter. Now as the rest of the game unfolds, everything in the game plan continues to open up.
Geno now on first and ten. He'll get this to the veteran tight end. No effect. Nice chunk here in this good-looking drive. Pickup of 14 and a first down. Not a whole lot complicated about this play, Mike. That was understanding where the holes of the defense were. Remember, in this zone coverage, you got to find green grass. Get past the first down marker. Be friendly to the quarterback. And then the ball has to be out on time before those zone defenders can react to the receiver. It's exactly how it played out here. You can drop all the fancy plays you want, but when the quarterback and the receiver see it through the same set of eyes, it's virtually impossible to stop. Following the completion, we'll get a stoppage here for an injured player. As the athletic training staff looks at him, we'll step away for a moment. An enviable spot to operate from. Here's second and in inches. From the shotgun, it's Smith. And that is caught in the end zone. He's in. D.K. Metcalf. Touchdown, Seattle. And this is what good offenses in the NFL do, Mike. It's the ability to bounce back. Even if the onset of the game doesn't go exactly according to plan, Everybody wants to take their opening possession and go down there and come away with a touchdown. But it's not always going to be perfect. You turn it over on possession one. What are you going to do in response on possession two? Well, we just got our answer, and they took it down for six. Jason Myers on to attempt the extra point. He's got it. And the Seahawks will tie things up at 7-7 here in the opening quarter. Top, seven apiece and the kicks away Debo Samuel gonna get a chance to return it good return here brings it up to the 33 yard line the Niners offense ready for their second possession we'll try to break out of this deadlock we are all even at seven as they start this drive first and ten They'll put Ayuk in motion. First and ten. Purdy. Nice job here by the defense. Did a good job just covering up everything for the most part. So once this ball was caught, really didn't have much of a choice but to just head out of bounds and pick up a modest game. Here's a second and six. Out of the gun. It's Purdy. His fullback releasing, and he's going to bring it in. Nothing a quarterback loves more, Mike, than being able to pick up a first down without being forced to push the ball downfield and force it past the line to gain. He settles for the underneath check down. He's confident that his receiver is going to pick up the rest after the catch. A run, and here's Mason. And he'll take this to about the 46-yard line. Big Leonard Williams brings him down. Here's second and nine. To throw, Purdy. A short one there, caught by Kittle. And he's going to be dropped after a pickup of about five. So the hope is when you call these underneath drag routes, you're trying to have your tight end come out the backside of the defense in space. So when you put the ball on him early, 
it leads to big yards after the catch. In this case, they don't get the real big play they were hoping for, but they'll definitely take it. Third and short. Purdy has his man. It's Samuel. That's two catches on this drive. This one for 10 yards and a first down. These curl routes. He's been running these routes since he was a young kid in Pop Warner football, and I like to call it pulling the string. You've got the defender thinking you're going downfield, and you stick that foot in the ground, work back to the quarterback, friendly to the ball, and really nice job picking up the first down. On the ground is Mason. He did a good job of making one man miss, but could not get away from this defense in the end. It turns into a loss of yards. The speed and the get-off by the big interior defensive tackle, Mike. I mean, he got through there so fast, he almost took the handoff himself. Lost one on the last play, so now it's second and 11. From the shotgun, it's Purdy. It'll get about six before he's taken down. Well, let's give some credit to the big boys up front in the trenches. They knew that blitz was coming. They held up just long enough that the quarterback could get that ball out safely and results in a completion. Here now, third and five. Out of the gun, here's Purdy. And this is going to be incomplete. That's great work to get in there and make things difficult defensively setting up a fourth down and on that third down they thought an easy way to pick it up and get some positive yards would go to their quick game but it didn't seem like the receiver and the quarterback were on the same page and now brings up fourth down Moody's kick is good and the Niners will break our tie and take a 10-7 lead and I think this is going to end up being considered a successful drive, Mike. I think, obviously, you would have loved to see them come down and convert and score a touchdown. But at the very least, they needed to come away with three. They were able to do that and take a lead on that field goal. Booty comes back on the field after making the field goal. He's set to kick off. On the return, it's Williams. And he'll be brought down just beyond the 25-yard line. The Seahawks offense starting to trot out for this next possession. This one has been tight so far. A field goal separating the two sides as this drive kicks off with first and ten. Play action now. It's Gino. He'll be hit as he throws, and that one will wind up incomplete. Could not step into the throw that time. It'll bring up second down. The whole idea of the play action pass, Mike, is that you can slow the pass rush down enough that it allows longer, slower developing pass concepts to open up downfield. But in this case, they were on him so fast that by the time he got his head around, that ball needed to come out. There was no timing, and he's trying to get back to the line of scrimmage, but will not, and be taken down there. Early in this drive, they're trying to establish some offensive rhythm, but now after that second down sack, really puts them in a must pass. You don't want to be in third and long very often in the NFL. It's not a very high percentage conversion rate, and with the danger of a three and out, they better hold up here in pass protection. Working out of the gun, Smith. That's over the middle and intercepted. That's the linebacker, Fred Warner. And he's going to be brought down. What a turn of events here. He has given his guys first and 10 in the red zone. So this is where an offensive play caller needs to come to the rescue of his quarterback because this defense, they're on to you. They've got two picks. They're starting to pick up on your tendencies. They're shifting guys over to counter them. Now you've got to add some wrinkles. Now you've got to throw them a curveball and try to shift back some of that advantage to your side of the ball.
a fresh set of downs to work with. It is first down and 10. From the gun, it's Purdy. And the rush gets home. He'll go down. They got him. This offense came into this drive hoping to extend their narrow lead, Mike. But instead, after first down, they find themselves in second and forever following that big sack right out of the gate. Work to do now as they come up on second and long. Shotgun snap to Purdy. Over the middle to IU complete. And they're going to get this all the way down inside the five. Sudden change. So you find yourself defensively a little bit on your heels. Your offense just turned the ball over. Now you've got to go out and make a stand. Well, so far this offense has moved the ball pretty quickly. But can they dig in and at least force a field goal? Purdy to throw. That's hauled in at the two. And he's going to be down close to the goal line. Good job defensively to make sure he did not get to the end zone. These are the worst. I, I had a couple years, Mike, where I swear I got tackled inside the one-yard line ten times, and then you look back and you're like, man, how many touchdowns did I leave on the board because I couldn't get one more yard. Now, for him individually, not ideal, but right now they're on the doorstep of the end zone, and they got to find a way to put that ball across the goal line. This is one of those throws where I don't think the risk is worth the reward. If you're going to throw the ball into tight coverage and take a chance, it better lead to a big gain, and in this case, a pretty modest pickup, considering that was a risky throw. Third and goal, Purdy. He's got his man, middle of the end zone. Jawan Jennings. Touchdown, San Francisco. So the turnover turns into a quick touchdown, and Greg, that's exactly how you want your offense to take care of business. Anytime your defense can create those sudden change situations, Mike, absolutely, you have to take advantage of it. One second, you're sitting on the bench going over your next drive. All of a sudden, after that turnover, you've got to be able to get out on the field and go take advantage of the short field and results in a nice touchdown. Extra point up and good from Moody. And the 49ers will get out in front 17 to 7. So, following that touchdown, Moody is back out to kick it off. On the return, it's LaVisca Chenault. He'll work his way across the 25-yard line. Out comes the Seattle offense as they get ready for their next possession. The deficit is at 10, so an important drive forthcoming. Getting started with first and 10. the play fake it's Smith now he takes off initially Mike a really good job by the defense nowhere to go with the ball for this quarterback he's forced to pull it down and turn into a runner little slow reaction and he's able to actually pick up a pretty good game they'll come up now for second down and four from the gun it's Gina this one complete to his tight end fan. And he'll be taken down. The gain is six, and it's a new set of downs. He picked up the first down. Really nice job here by the quarterback, understanding what did he need to pick up a fresh set of downs. In this case, that underneath drag route was all it took. Get the ball into the hands of your receiver. Pick up a first down. 
The run up the middle. It's Walker. And he'll take this forward for about three. It's second down. Once again, it's Walker. And he's going to pick up the first down across midfield and down at the 49. Second down at these distances, Mike, you pretty much anticipate a pass. And I think that's what the defense was lined up thinking. In this case, they leave a little too much room on the ground and the offense is able to pick up a first down. They'll go play action. It's Smith. He's going to air one out for Metcalf. Up until that incompletion, they've done a really nice job on this drive, Mike, picking up fresh sets of downs. And typically, throwing the ball on first down is a great way to do it. It's actually the easiest down in football to operate in. But now they find themselves in second and ten. Do you keep it in the air and try to get the first down here? Or is the idea to just make third down manageable and take your chances picking up a key third down? What makes great linebackers stand out from the pack is their instincts and their vision. In this case, the linebacker has his keys, brings them right where the ball is going, and he's able to make a play at the point of attack and keep this to a no game. It is third and ten. Off the play fake. Smith. Ah, the pressure too much, and he goes down. Fred Warner, the all-pro linebacker, shooting in there to bring him down. The best thing they did here, Mike, is keep their rush lane integrity. What that means is you have to rush the quarterback as a unit. Keep him in the pocket. Keep him on that X. And when you do, man, he becomes a sitting duck for this pass rush. So on fourth down, on comes Michael Dixon to punt. This one angles out of bounds, and the mark comes inside the 15-yard line. The 49ers offense headed back to take over once more. This will start from the 12, trying to put a drive together here. It's first and 10. Throwing from the gun is Purdy. Downfield, and it's caught by Ayuk. And he's taken down up past the 35. You can see this connection is just starting really to pick up. They're seeing the game through the same set of eyes, and that is the job of the receiver. What is my quarterback expecting from me? Where does he want me? Be there on time, and it leads to big gains like this. So, from the 36, it is first and 10. Throwing is Purdy. Open man is Jennings. And that keeps him ahead of schedule. That's a first down completion of seven yards. The drag route is certainly not the most complicated route on the route tree, but a really nice job there using the scheme to create separation. He did a really nice job there working across the middle of the field as he made himself open. On second down, Purdy. That's Ayuk with it on the left side. And they're gonna work this down inside the 45. This is a great example, Mike, of just how effective it is when you're efficient on early downs throwing the ball. I mean, when you can pick up first downs without getting to third down, as the game unfolds, things just get easier and easier. Take what the defense is giving you. Don't force the ball downfield. But when you can stay ahead of the chains without having to get to third and have it plays, that's when an offense is really firing. Here's Purdy again. That's taken in by Jennings. And he'll be taken down, and that's going to do it. That's the last play 
of the first quarter. So they come to the line for first down and 10. They'll throw again with Purdy. He's got it at the seven. And they're going to get this all the way down inside the five. I love the way the ball's been moving around to different guys this drive, Mike. I mean, it really keeps the defense guessing and off balance. And now this defense is going to have to figure out how to keep this offense out of the end zone because it's first and goal. From the four-yard line, trying to punch it in. First down and goal. Throwing again is Purdy. Off-balance throw. It's complete. And he's going to be down close to the goal line. Good job defensively to make sure he did not get to the end zone. It's not the big play they were hoping for, but first down efficiency, staying ahead of the chains, is what every offense is trying to find, and it brings up a manageable second down. They bring their tight end right. They'll try to run this one in. Trying to find a crease in there. It's a big pile of bodies, but he is going to come up short. The thing that stands out to me about this defense, Mike, is they just make you earn everything. They don't concede any downs. You see it here on this last play. Great job here. No gain. Force third down. They'll run. And he will not get in the defense. Standing their ground, pushing him back, and it sets up fourth and goal. How about this for a goal line stand, Mike? Your back's against a wall. Back-to-back -back plays. You hold tight. They set themselves up here to defend a fourth and goal try. So, instead of going for the first down, in comes the field goal unit. Bit of a surprise here. He is two for two. That kick is good. And the 49ers add on to their lead. You know, I think it's safe to say here, Mike, as this offense leaves the field, they wanted to stay out there and go for it. But I think in this case, the coach is playing the long game. He understands that these three points now can end up being very valuable as this game moves along. Moody comes back on the field after making the field goal. He's set to kick off. On the return, it's Chenault. And he'll be brought down past the 25. Decent field position to start this drop. The Seahawks offense and Kenneth Walker ready to take over once more. The deficit is double digits, so work to do as they begin this drive with first and ten. Three tight ends in the game to start the drive. On the ground, it's Walker to start the drive. He'll burrow his way forward for a couple. That's Charvarius Ward, able to make the play. Look him up on a second down and eight. They go play action with Smith. He's going to air one out for Metcalf. And they are not going to catch up to him. He will score. 71 yards. Touchdown, Seattle. A beautiful combination in the air there. The pass downfield and bringing it the rest of the way into the end zone for the touchdown. And it's really just a great route, Mike, and then a beautiful throw. The accuracy of the throw is what allowed the receiver not only to secure the catch, but then be able to turn it up and finish the play and find himself in the end zone. 
Myers. Good on the extra point. And the Seahawks are back within six. After the TD, Myers comes on now to kick it away. On the return, it's Ronnie Bell. And this will work out quite well. He'll get it all the way out to the 30-yard line. So here's Brock Purdy and this 49ers offense heading back onto the field. And he's had things all his way in the first half. Those numbers are sensational. He looks to add to him with another drive here. They'll come up here first and ten. Here's Purdy. It's Samuel on the screen. And they'll get about four here as he is taken down. When a defense has speed to the ball like this group does, it makes these wide receiver screens really challenging because all those fast linebackers and defensive backs that are chasing the ball carrier, the offensive line are the ones responsible for them, and sometimes that's just a speed mismatch, and they can't get out in front. And that's going to be incomplete. Coverage was good that time. The contact jarring the ball loose and forcing third down. A rare miss for a quarterback that we've seen really come out on fire throughout this entire contest. I mean, his completion percentage, Mike, is well above league average. And frankly, it's really the biggest reason why they find themselves out in front. A short one there. Caught by Kittle. And he'll be stopped short of a first down. And that will necessitate a call to the punt team. It's fourth down. I think this is one of those plays that when the ball carrier watches this back in the film room tomorrow, he's going to be a little frustrated with himself. If he could just have made that one guy miss, he picks up the first down. Instead, he gets brought down short of the sticks, and now they got a fourth down decision to make. And he'll get a few yards on this return, up past the 15-yard line. There's DK Metcalf, he, and the Seahawks offense set for their next drop. The deficit, six points. A touchdown here would be mighty nice for the offense. See what they can do on this drive. First and ten. This drive starts on the ground with Walker. The defense all over this one. They get him behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a couple. Well, they try to get the run game started here early on this drive, Mike, and they're just going to have to do a better job up front. There's really nowhere for this ball carrier to go. You never want to lose yards on first down, but that's exactly the case here. On the handoff, this is Walker. And some good blocking, springing up a gain of nine as we get to third down. It's tough to completely celebrate, Mike, when you don't pick up the first down, but that's a run you will take every single time. I mean, good yardage in a lot of situations, it'll get you the first down, just not here. We'll try and run it with Walker. A gain of 11 on that one. First down, Seattle. You can see the trust they have in this running back in the offensive line. You're facing a three and out. You're trying to extend this drive. Turn around, hand it to the guy behind you, and let him do the rest. First and 10 now from the 36. Now, Gino. Metcalf, left side. He's got it. And they bring him down, but not until he crosses midfield. Every once in a while, it just comes down to you need somebody in the huddle to just make a play, and... 
There wasn't a whole lot fancy here. The quarterback just dumps the ball down, a quick underneath completion, and then really it's the yards after catch that did the rest. And that's what it takes. You're not always going to have the perfect play. You're not always going to dial up the perfect play against the perfect look. Sometimes players need to make plays, and that was a good one there. They'll try to set up the screen here with Walker. And they'll move this one down inside the 40-yard line. All right, Mike, so the way they teach these screen plays to the offensive lineman is you got to stop the defender's feet. You just don't want him to get a free, clean rush to the quarterback because you're so worried about getting out in front of the back. Stop his feet, make him start his rush over again before you slip out. Ball gets dumped right over the rusher's head. Bang, now you're in the open field. That's complete to Metcalf. And he's into the end zone yet again. D.K. Metcalf. Touchdown, Seahawks. His big night continues. His third touchdown of the game. This is turning into a monster game. Let's keep an eye on this. Three touchdown catches alone in the first half. Could be a record-setting game. Now the point after drop from Myers. The kick is good. And the Seahawks will go up by a point here in the second quarter. To the TD. Myers comes on now to kick it away. Here is Bell on the return. And he'll work this one past the 25 to right about the 28 yard line. Brandon Ayuk heading back onto the field with his 49er teammates. And seemingly every time they've looked his way in the first half, it's resulted in a big play that is borne out by those eye popping numbers. Set to go now on first and ten. From the shotgun, it's Purdy. Got a man coming across the field. He's got it. And they will bring him down on the other side of midfield. These crossing concepts are frequently used, Mike, throughout the entire game all across the league and what it does is it creates a lot of natural rubs you run out the backside of the defense and rely heavily on the yards after the catch and it's exactly how they're able to pick up this big game so Kittle comes in motion and finds Samuel working across the field and they're going to be set up in the red zone. They've got it inside the 15. If you want to score points at a high level in the NFL, you have to generate explosive plays. And after that big chunk pass play, they find themselves now down there in the red zone. And this is where you have to finish drives. Down at the 12, it's first and 10. Shotgun snap to Purdy. His throw on first down is going to be incomplete. It's rare to see an offense that finds themselves trailing and say, well, their quarterback's been actually one of their biggest bright spots. Usually that doesn't go hand in hand. So it's a little surprising to see him miss a throw like that on a day where he's completed passes at a highly efficient rate. He'll run. This is Mason. Mmm. Changing direction there as he's able to pick up three.
Here's third and seven. Out of the gun. It's Purdy. Oh, and that throw not able to be pulled in. It's incomplete. Looked like he may have got a little ahead of himself there. And it's going to bring up fourth down. They couldn't quite connect there on that short pass, Mike. And I just think it's worth reminding everyone how different the concepts are down here in the red zone than what the rest of the game plan calls for in the normal part of the field. Three for three in the game, as this one is also good. And the Niners are going to move out in front. It's always a little bit of a letdown, Mike. You find yourself deep in the red zone, and you have to settle for a short field goal like that. In this case, he's able to put it through, and they get three. Moody comes back on the field after making the field goal. He's set to kick off. Williams now to return. He'll get this up to the 28-yard line. Nice place for the drive to start. The Seahawks offense and their running back getting set for this next possession. And as a play caller, when you've got a guy who's running like this, you lean on him and your offensive line. He's had big opening after big opening and big numbers in this first half. Here's first and ten. From the gun, here's the give to Walker. And nothing on that one back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Coming off that edge, Mike, you have to quickly determine, is this a pass or is it a run? And once he realized it was a run, he's able to shed his blocker, make the play, no gain. We'll try again. It's second and ten. On play action, Smith. And that's going to be incomplete. Coverage was good that time. The contact jarring the ball loose and forcing third down. For the most part, he's been very accurate with the ball. I mean, he's completing over 60% of his passes, but because they haven't been able to get any big explosive plays, continue to push the ball downfield, hasn't really translated on the scoreboard just yet. Taking the deep shot for Smith and Jigba. And they bring him down there, but it is inside the 10. It is going to be first and goal. They really showed off their connection on that pitch and catch, Mike, and just really good ball placement and really good separation downfield. And when those two things align, it's just really challenging for a defender to stay with them and take that play away. Ball sitting at the seven, first and goal. Here's Walker. He's going to lose yardage. How about the defense standing up in the red zone? They'll mark it at the 10. I'd like to see that running back be a little bit more decisive with his cut, Mike. You can see he was a little hesitant. And once you're late making that decision, you just kind of get strong laterally. Great job there by the defense. And he has no choice but to take that loss. One more time with Walker. He'll take this one down to the 8-yard line. So can the defense come up with the early stop here on third and goal? Working out of the gun, Smith. It is brought in in the end zone. Tyler Lockett, touchdown Seattle. He has done it again. That is four touchdown passes in his first half. Greg, he might skip halftime with the way he's performing right now. Yeah, Mike, this passing attack is just really unstoppable. I mean, it is just remarkable the success he's been able to have. We're not even at halftime yet. He finds himself on record pace. I can't wait to see what he does the rest of this game. Myers now to add the PAT. Oh, 
He's got it. And the Seahawks will up the lead to five. To the TD, Myers comes on now to kick it away. Samuel, going to see what he can do. He'll get this past the 20 before he's brought down shy of the 25-yard line. Here's San Francisco offense, ready to take possession of the ball once more. The deficit is five, so they'll try to put a drive together here, and they'll begin it with first and ten. Out of the gun, here's Purdy. A quick throw, that's complete on the slam. And he's going to be taken down at the 37. Do a nice job there to move the chains early in this drive, but now as they approach midfield, continue to keep your foot on the gas. Don't get conservative. Don't start sitting on the ball. Cross midfield and go. Anytime you find yourself on your opponent's side of the field, you have to be thinking points. Throwing on first down is Purdy. This throw left side caught by Kittle. And that keeps him ahead of schedule. That's a first down completion of seven yards. These are the play calls, Mike, that offensive coordinators use to just get their quarterback and their passing game into some sort of rhythm. Easy pitch and catch, get the ball out of his hand, see a completion. These typically, as the game goes on, lead to bigger and bigger gains. Pass midfield to the 45. And he is out of bounds all the way down at the 35 yard line. Following the penalty, he'll run it. And he'll get this very close to a first down. A nice run there. But just end up a little bit short. Very positive returns on that run. I mean, really, the only thing not to like is that they weren't able to move the chains. Do you know what? The way he ran there, I think they go right back to him and see if he has even a bigger carry in. Needing a yard, they throw with Purdy. That's to the sideline and intercepted. Picked off by Tyrell Dodson. And his offense is going to be all set up with a short field and a chance to extend their lead. So the first part of any interception is just end up with the ball in your hands, right? That's what every defensive coordinator wants. But anytime you can get yards on the return, that's just an added bonus. And that's what we see here. There's a little space, does a great job securing the catch, and all of those yards just set up for better field position as their offense takes the field. The home team's offense and veteran Tyler Lockett getting ready to get back to work. will have a short field looking to build on the lead. They'll break the huddle. Coming up now for first and ten. They'll go play action. It's Smith. Connecting with the tight end. That's Vance. That's a nice pickup on a first down throw. It's a gain of eight. As a route runner, once you identify zone coverage like they were playing here, the key is find open space and stay in it. He did a nice job here because that was not a big hole. The quarterback had to put a little extra on that one, and they were able to make the completion. On second down, Walker, and he'll get past the marker. So he's got a first down on that gain of five. 
This is a situation that play callers love to be in, Mike. They have all their options on the table. Second and short, play action pass, you can run. In this case, they choose to keep it on the ground, play it safe, pick up the first down. On first and 10, here comes Walker. He'll be stopped just a short game, down to the third. Here's a second and nine. The tight end Fant in motion. Play action now. It's Gino. That is caught. What a throw. DK Metcalf. Touchdown Seahawks. This is quickly turning into a virtuoso performance. Four first half touchdowns. So the numbers starting to pile up here early. We haven't reached halftime, and he's already thrown four touchdown passes. Now the point after drop from Myers. It's up. And through. And the Seahawks add on one more as they extend their second quarter lead. After the TD, Myers comes on now to kick it away. Samuel, going to see what he can do. And he's brought down right at the 25-yard line. The Niners offense getting their final instructions before heading back onto the field. They'll try to establish some tempo as they start this one with first and ten. Throwing from the gun is Purdy. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. We've already seen these two guys connect for a touchdown in this game. And had they been on the same page there, I think they would have been able to add to that total. Unfortunately for them, just a little bit off and it falls incomplete. That one incomplete. They can't hook up there. And that incompletion takes us to the two-minute warning. Two incompletions to start the drive. And it leads to third down and ten. They'll try to get this one on the ground. Pick up of 11 yards on that one. It's good for a Niners first down. We've seen third down really turn into a pass happy down throughout the league. And I think this is an example of the play caller kind of using that to his advantage. Keep the defense off guard, keeps the ball on the ground, extend this possession. To throw on first down. Is and the rush gets there. He'll be tracked down. And now we're seeing the game kind of go back and forth. Each team trading blows, trying to establish control over the other. Nice chunk play on the previous play. The defense responds back with a sack. And we we'll see which team can establish a little bit more of this control as the game unfolds. Open man is Jennings. And they'll hold him to a gain of just a couple and sets up third down. Similar to a tight end, the slot receiver is often considered the safety blanket. He makes all the difficult catches, tends to be a little bit more around the line of scrimmage, and so far today, he's certainly lived up to that reputation. 
He'll try and get there on the ground. Now Seattle going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now. The punt for the second time, looking to pin the opponent back deep. And no return forthcoming. It's a touchback, and will come out to the 20-yard line. The home team's offense, and Geno Smith, getting ready for their next possession. And he has done everything you could ask of him coming into this one. He spread it around, hasn't taken many chances, and potentially on his way to a big game throwing the football. The drive begins at the 20. Here's first and 10. Back is Smith. They'll try to set up the screen here. And he'll be taken down all the way up past the 45. First and ten. From the gun, it's Gino. He'll get this complete to Walker. And he'll be taken down rather swiftly after a gain of just three. Now Seattle will use the final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go until halftime. Second and seven. From the shotgun, Smith. He'll go right and find his running back. And that's going to be a first down. A pickup of nine. So we have reached halftime, and the difference is a dozen at the break as we send you back east to sunny Florida. Standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report, it's the coach, Jonathan Coachman. Okay, Michael, thanks very much. And with that, we welcome you all into our EA Sports studios. This is the Halftime Report. For the Seahawks in the first half, they were led by their quarterback, Tito Smith. The numbers boggled the mind. Five, count of five, first half touchdown passes. That is getting near record territory with a whole nother half still to play. Pretty interesting first half. We'll see if any strategy changes for the next 30 minutes or more as this second half gets underway. And he'll be brought down right around the 25-yard line. The Niners offense going to have a first crack at it as we begin this third quarter. They'll do so with first and ten. to throw Purdy looking to Samuel on the out route this may look like a simple connection Mike just pitch and catch but I can promise you the amount of time these two guys have spent together on the practice field in the meeting rooms just getting on the same page seeing the game through the same set of eyes it makes what's pretty difficult seem a lot easier a tight end in motion now Up the middle they go. 
finding room across midfield. And he's going to be taken down on the other side of the 50-yard line. This is a combination of footwork and vision. His ability to kind of weave through traffic and understand where the holes were. It's a really nice job working through some bodies and picking up a big game. A run. And here's Mason. And a pick up of three or maybe four. Big Leonard Williams brings him down. Here's a second and six. To throw, Birdie. He'll get this into the hands of Debo. And he'll be taken down. The gain is six, and it's a new set of downs. He picked up the first down. The receiver thought he had a nice soft spot in that zone coverage, and he settles down to give a nice target to the quarterback. But the defense had eyes on him the entire time. Secure rally tackle prevents that from turning into a big play. Off the play fake, Purdy. That's complete to Mason. And they'll get about half of what they needed. It's a pickup of five and sets up second and five. This is one of those throws where you're hoping you do most of the damage after the catch, but give credit to the defense. Once that ball was caught, they were on him quickly, and there was nowhere for him to go after the catch. On the ground is Mason. He makes one man miss, but stopped quickly as they hold him to a gain of one. Here's a third down and four. Purdy works out of the pistol. And he'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. You can't fault the quarterback on this one, but he really didn't even have much of an opportunity. By the time he hit the top of his drop and got his eyes downfield, the defense was all over him, and he really had no choice but to just get that ball out of his hand and live to play another snap. Another one through the uprights. He's four for four on the game. And the 49ers will cut into that lead. And I can tell you firsthand, Mike, when you find yourself trailing in a game, you don't feel very good about coming away with field goals. But in this case, it does get them a little bit closer and cut into this deficit. Moody comes back on the field after making the field goal. He's set to kick off. Here's Williams on the return. And he'll be taken down right at the 29-yard line. The home team's offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And he has given the folks who put together our highlights a lot to choose from. Came out hot, has not let up. Touchdown pass after touchdown pass. The defense left grasping at straws trying to figure out how to slow him down he has had some kind of game a fresh set of downs to work with it is first down and 10 off the play fake it's Smith throwing it right into the hands of his running back It'll be taken down rather swiftly after a gain of just three. All right, so there's really three areas that a modern NFL running back has to excel at. Number one, the traditional handoffs. Yes, you have to operate out of the backfield like a traditional running back. Number two, you have to be excellent and reliable in pass protection. And maybe bigger than all of them, you have to be at least serviceable out of the backfield in the passing game. And that's going to be a first down. A pickup of nine. There's no more efficient play 
in the NFL, Mike, than the play-action passing game. And you can see here why. You make the defense have to honor both the run and the pass, and he's able to pick up a nice gain to his tight end. On first down is Smith. And that one knocked away. It's incomplete. DK Metcalf was the intended target. And it'll lead to a second down. You know, there's a fine line between trusting your arm and having a little bit too much faith in your arm, right? I think this is one of those situations here, Mike, where there was nowhere to go with the ball. He tries to fit that one in there anyway, and he's lucky that it just falls incomplete. He'll work this ahead for two, maybe three. Linebacker Fred Warner brings him down. What can they do here on third down and seven? From the shotgun, it's Smith. And this ball incomplete on third down. There's a saying on defense, Mike, tips and overthrows, you've got to get those. Those got to turn into interceptions. So if you're the offense here, after you saw that ball batted in the air, man, I can promise you it felt like a lifetime waiting to see if it just falls harmlessly to the ground. The 49ers offense ready to take over once again. They trail here by a couple of scores. The margin is not as this drive starts with first down. They'll send a tight end in motion. He'll get him behind his blockers, get forward for a pickup of three. The veteran big Jonathan Hankins in there to end it. They face second down and seven. He's going to get this up near the first down marker. Tackle made at the 29-yard line. Third and a yard. Trying to pick this one up on the ground. That's going to be pretty close. Looks like he's got it, and he does. First down. Really just the same approach that an offense would take on a quarterback sneak, Mike. You don't necessarily have to spring him for a huge gain. Can you buy just enough space up front to pick up one yard? That's exactly what they did. Pick up the first down. On first and ten, it's Purdy. Ayuk makes the catch right side. And he is out of bounds, but not until he's inside the 40-yard line. A big play there with Purdy to IU, and even 30 yards. We see so many wide receivers in today's NFL that almost resemble more of a running back style. When they get the ball in their hands, not only are they able to pick up big yards, they're able to fight through tackles and make people miss. That's an element that a lot of offenses are searching for. Takes a lot of pressure off the quarterback. Here's Purdy on first and ten. He's got his man downfield. It's Debo. And they're going to be set up in the red zone. They've got it inside the 15. Mike, you've heard me say it a thousand times. The easiest down to throw the ball in the NFL is first down. I hate when teams wait till later in the possession to throw the ball. So early first down completion, you're on the plus side of the field. Now you're thinking strike. Touchdown, field goal, but either way. And he will score. Brandon Ayuk, touchdown, 49ers. He's got another one. His second touchdown of the evening. 
Greg, sometimes we say it too often. That was an important drive. That one really felt important for them to edge a little bit closer. Yeah, now the question is, Mike, yeah, the offense does their job, but can the defense get a stop? They've got to continue to get the ball back to their offense. Let them build on that previous drive because they've still got some work to do. Moody now for the extra point. He gets it to go, and the 49ers will cut it to a two-point lead. So, following that touchdown, Moody is back out to kick it off. On the return, it's Williams. And he'll work this one past the 25 to right about the 28-yard line. The Seahawks offense and their quarterback headed out for their next possession. And he's had it going in the first half. Really had his way with the secondary. They have been powerless to stop him. Now, they're trying to keep it going. They go play action with Smith. This one finds Lockett down the left side. And that keeps him ahead of schedule. That's a first down completion of seven yards. So they have these rules for the receivers, Mike. They call them green grass rules. And the idea is if you're running across the field and you're looking at the quarterback, you're going to stay on the run. If you're not looking at the quarterback, that tells him, I'm going to sit in this soft zone. I'm going to what they call punch and pivot and stop. Oh, the blitz overwhelming the offensive line. And down he goes. If there's any silver lining for this drive, Mike, it's the fact that at least this sack occurred on an early down so I guess technically they have a chance to claw themselves out of this hole but that's the third sack of the game this defense doesn't show any signs of slowing down third down and nine working out of the gun Smith got it with Smith in Jigba 17 yards on that connection it's good for a Seahawks first down. Now, so far here today, putting points on the board certainly hasn't been a problem, and plays like that are why. Think about it, Mike. Sometimes you just have to take what the defense gives you and not force something that's not there, and that mid-range pass results in a fresh set of downs. So they come to the line for first down and 10. The tight end Fant in motion. Smith now to throw on first down. Firing right side, brought in by Brown. And he's not going to get too far tackled after a gain of just a yard. Really well done here by the defense, Mike, executing this zone defense, and they've got to be able to pattern read. You're not just going to drop back to a spot and just play like a robot. Based on what the receivers do off the line, the defenders have different rules of where their zones move to. Well, they had that one dialed in right from the jump, and they were able to stop that play really before it got started. A game there of 11. First down, Seattle. I'd like to see them do a better job here the rest of the game, Mike, just disguising the coverage from the pre-snap look to the post-snap look. And, and what I mean is, when you have a quarterback at this level and what they see before the ball's in their hands is the exact same thing they see once they do get the ball, everything is just so much easier for them to process. Change the look, change the coverages, move your safeties, make the quarterback have to process with the ball in his hand. Here's a second and three forthcoming. Gino to throw. He'll throw it left and has his running back. 
and it'll be a short pickup that's not enough for the first down. Defensive coordinators preach all the time, play pass defense with vision. It's exactly the case here. They're able to rally to the ball, keep that to a short game. They'll look to pick this up third and a yard. Here's Walker. And he will have the Seahawks first down. They're able to convert by plenty on that third and one. Nothing real fancy about this call here, Mike, right? And this third and short, just get the ball to your running back, make sure he has enough space to pick up the first down, and they're able to convert. He'll keep it on the ground and keep it with Walker. He'll work his way forward for about three yards. The veteran Leonard Floyd, they're on the tackle. The run up the middle, it's Walker. And he'll work this into the red zone, inside the 20-yard line, taken down after a gain of five. Looking to convert for the third time on this drive, they'll need another here. It's third and two. Straight ahead, it's Walker. And that call will not get it done. The defense ready, stopping him behind the line of scrimmage. And it sets up fourth down. The idea here for this offense is you're not really thinking necessarily touchdown. You're thinking first down. Let's get a fresh set of downs here and reset. But in this case, they suffer a loss, and it brings up fourth down. On fourth down, the veteran Jason Myers for the Seattle field goal. This one will be from 37 yards out. Myers kick is good and the Seahawks will extend their lead and this is what you want I mean you clearly have the advantage but you want to continue to apply pressure can you score every time you get the ball they're able to do that here they tack on three and extend their lead So Myers back out there at the field goal a moment ago. Now set to kick this one away. Here is Bell on the return. He'll get this up to the 28-yard line. Nice place for the drive to start. The Niners offense and Brandon Ayuk ready to take over once more. And he was unguardable in the first half. You see the numbers as they try to add... They'll come up here first and ten. So Kittle comes in motion. The drive will start on the ground. And he tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, but will not happen here. I think he's going to lose a yard. Every team makes an emphasis on winning first down. But as a defense, when you're able to take them back for a loss second and long you can really become more of a pass centric defense and really tips the scales into your favor Purdy now on second down a short one there caught by Kittle and he'll be taken down up at the 40 yard line now this is the epitome of a really short throw and a really nice run after catch and listen for a quarterback it all counts the same you don't always have to throw the ball downfield to generate explosive plays, and these drag routes can be very, very effective. <laughs> the 
He'll come up on a second down and eight. To throw is Purdy. He gets it to Samuel, left side. And they'll have it across midfield, down at the opposing 46-yard line. Every quarterback's dream is, can I get the ball out of my hand as fast as possible and get it to a guy that can do the rest after the catch? And it seems like nowadays, throughout the entire league, the best offenses thrive in yards after the catch. To throw on first down is Purdy. His fullback releasing, and he's going to bring it in. So I don't think his fullback was his primary option on that play, but a really nice job by the quarterback working quickly through his progression, getting the ball down to his big fullback, and he's able to pick up a nice game. Second down and three. From the shotgun, it's Purdy. He'll tuck it and take off. I love this call, Mike. Second down and short. One of the best downs in football to take a shot. Give credit to the defense. They were ready for it. But a nice job by the quarterback. Realizing there's nothing downfield. Take off. Turn into a runner. Pick up the first down. It's a three tight end look. As they have it first and ten. They'll turn and hand this one off. And he'll be taken down at the 25-yard line. This just shows why you can't count on just one guy to take him down. He's a powerful enough runner. You've got to have guys coming in support when that first hit is made. It takes a team effort to stop him, especially once he gets going. So no shortage of offense in this one as we end the third. We'll have more. Thursday Night Football after this. Set to go now on first and ten. Now Purdy. Got his man at the six. And he will score again. Brandon Ayuk, touchdown San Francisco. His big night continues. His third touchdown of the game. What a game this has been. Back and forth we go. And that fourth quarter score changes the lead one more time. And we've seen the lead go back and forth, Mike. And now the question is, can they get a stop? Can they find a way defensively to hang on to this lead? and get themselves this big win. All right, now, what can the Niners do as they face a big two-point conversion here? They're trying to burn some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he will get into the end zone. The conversion is good, and the lead is up to three here in the fourth quarter. So now playing with the lead after that fourth quarter touchdown. Time to kick it back the other way. Williams now to return. And he'll be brought down just beyond the 25-yard line. The Seahawks offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been successful. He just processes things so quickly making the right read seemingly every time. A first down throw for Smith. 
They'll try to set up the screen here with Walker. And that keeps him ahead of schedule. That's a first down completion of seven yards. You see so many teams wait till third down to execute their screen game, but I like in this case the play caller changes things up. He uses the screen game on first down, which will have an effect on this pass rush going forward. How aggressive do they want to get after the quarterback? Because they got that screen play still in the back of their head. They'll keep it on the ground. And that'll give them a first down. Tackle made after the pickup of three. I think this second down call, Mike, they were hoping that at worst they had themselves set up for a third down and short. But there's no need for third down. He was able to get enough on second, and they get a fresh set of downs. So, first and ten here now at the 38. On the bootleg, it's Smith. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. They nearly connected on the big play downfield, but he's not quite able to hold on to that ball through the contact. You can chalk that one up as a win defensively. They'll run here. And he's going to be stopped in his tracks. He'll lose a couple of yards on that one. Number one rule of run blocking for the offensive line is you don't want to allow penetration. It just doesn't give your running back any angles to cut and find the hole. It's exactly how it played out here. They've got to do a better job holding the line of scrimmage and not getting pushed back. Here's Gino. They'll try to set up the screen here. And a good job here defensively. They did not let him get away. He's well short of the first down marker. It's a pretty good effort there on third and long. Initially, I really thought that screen was timed up pretty well, and he had a chance to pick up the first down. But give credit to the defense. It was the pursuit and running to the ball, and they're able to stop him just short. The 49ers offense and the wideout getting set to go once more. They lead by a field goal as they go to work with a first and ten. Throwing is Purdy. Now, screen set up for Mason. That's a nice pickup on a first down throw. It's a gain of eight. Here's second and two. Nothing doing on that one. He'll go down behind the line. You know at this point, the defense has to sell out and stop the run. You know exactly what the offense is trying to get accomplished by keeping the ball on the ground. But now the question remains, are they willing to take some risk here and put the ball in the air on third down? Or do they play it safe and keep running the clock by keeping the ball on the ground? On third down, it's Purdy. Who else? Another catch for his favorite target. Purdy on target to Ayuk, and the 49ers have a first down. So this is a part of the game that everybody works on, Mike. They call it four-minute offense, and you don't necessarily have to have four minutes on the clock, but the whole idea is we possess the ball late in the fourth quarter with the lead. The goal is we want to end the game with the ball. So that third down conversion is going to go a long way protect the ball, continue to pick up first downs. If they do that, I don't even think their opponent sees the ball again. And he'll work forward for about three. It's second down. So Kittle comes in motion. There's that man again. Another catch. 
Well, he's brought down. That pass is going to pick up four and bring up third down. Purdy works out of the pistol. He dropped this for Mason. And he's going to get there. He got the first down, not by a whole lot, but that'll keep this drive rolling. The best quarterbacks, Mike, they don't necessarily even have to see the running back in the check down. They can just feel him. It allows them to keep their eyes downfield, allow their tight ends and wide receivers to continue to work open. In this case, nice job by the quarterback getting that ball in his hands and letting him do the rest after the catch. Right side, pulled in by Samuel. An enviable spot to operate from. Here's second and inches. And he'll have enough to move the chains. He'll take this forward for about three yards. They didn't need a lot here to pick up the first down, so I think it's a smart call. Get the ball to a guy who can maneuver his way across the marker. And Mike, listen, if they hadn't stopped him so quickly, you and I both know he could have taken that one a lot longer. Here's Purdy on first and ten. That's taken in by Jennings. And they bring him down, but not until they get inside the 30-yard line. A lot could go wrong anytime you decide to put the ball in the air here late in the fourth quarter as you're trying to run out the clock and protect this lead. But at the same time, I like that they haven't gone super concerned. Just hand off right, hand off left. And it just turns into tackling practice. So, uh, The ball comes out. And this is taken in by the defense. Well, the ball comes out and the scramble for it, it ends up becoming a turnover. And the offense walks off the field disappointed with that fumble. Mike, when you look at a stat sheet, at the end of the game and you want to determine which team wins and which team loses at the top of the list is ball security which team does a better job protecting it and which team does a better job taking it away ball rests at the 37 it's first and 10 play action now. It's Gino. This one finds Lockett down the left side. They'll try again here. Second and ten. On the bootleg. It's Smith. Taking off. These plays just kill you on defense. The pressure is good, but you have to contain them. Quarterback does a nice job of escaping the pocket, turns into a runner, scrambles for positive yardage. Here is a big one. Third down and two. They'll run. A gain of 13. It's good for a Seahawks first down. There's a big conversation going on right now around the NFL about what is the true value of having a run game. And I've always thought it comes down to being good at three situations. Can you run the ball in the fourth quarter with a lead? How well can you run the ball on the goal line? And then in this case, how well can you run the ball in short yard situations? That's a nice pickup on a first down throw. It's a gain of eight. The drag route. We used to say this is day one install. Every single offense in the NFL has this sort of route, especially for the tight end position. And depending on the speed and the run after catch ability of the tight end, sometimes it can lead to some of the biggest gains. Throwing on second down. Smith. Ah, oh, the ball's out. 
Ah, it's picked up by one of his teammates. Sometimes these games in the NFL, Mike, they get decided by simply how the ball bounces. I mean, how often do we see a quarterback in the pocket get strip sack, and that ball ends up going the other direction? Fortunately for them, they can regroup, get back in the huddle, and live another day. Ball falls into the hands of his own guy, and they'll see if they can dodge this bullet. They need one right now. Third and long. From the gun, it's Gino. And he's going to go down yet again. He has been under fire all game long. If they win this game, this pass rush is going to be a big reason why. The five sacks speak for itself, but their ability to disrupt the timing of this offense, that can't be overstated. Kicking time for the Seahawks. They'll punt this one away. They'll be forced to punt, trailing here in the fourth quarter. Oh, not the greatest punt there. This is going to hit and go out of bounds. So here's Brock Purdy and this 49ers offense heading back onto the field. And he has been masterful so far leading this offense, keeping the mistakes to a minimum on point with his passes generally one step ahead of the defense all game long here's first and ten they'll run this is Mason not much to speak of on that one maybe a gain of a yard it's second down stick with him again and he'll get close to the marker a nice run probably a yard short of that first down this crowd into it now as we get to third down They need two. Here's Purdy. Throw to the sideline. Well done. Good job with the feet. Stays in bounds. It looks like, and yes, they do have the first down. A first down on a gain of 11. The best guys I've been around, Mike, they have a sense where they can see the ball, but they can feel the sideline. And that's kind of an innate sense that these guys have that allows them to concentrate and secure the catch and ensuring that both feet remain in bounds. First and 10, Purdy. He'll find his tight end, Kittle, on the right side. And they'll get him out four here as he is taken down. And this is where the versatility of the tight end position really starts coming into play. Not only do they have to line up with their hand on the ground in line, that they can occasionally split out in the slot. And man, they're too fast for linebackers, and a lot of times, they're too big for defensive backs. On second down, they run the counter. And he'll get maybe about four yards out of that one. The lane closed quickly, and here comes third down. Shotgun snap to Purdy. This throw left side caught by Kittle. Nice job there defensively to keep him in front of the marker. It's going to bring up fourth down. When you're willing to throw the ball short of the sticks on third down, you know what that tells me, Mike? The decision to go for it on fourth down has already been made. If you're able to pick it up with yards after the catch, great. But if not, it's a fourth and short and you give yourself a realistic shot of converting on this fourth down. And that's a nice job of getting to him, making sure 
That return was not going anywhere. The Seahawks offense and Kenneth Walker ready to take over once more. And he has put in a full game's work and then some. Just an incredible performance on the ground to this point in the fourth quarter. Operating from their own 23, they'll begin first and 10. From the shotgun, Smith. That's complete. It's Metcalf. And he will take this one in. 77 yards. Touchdown, Seattle. He is having a performance to remember. There is five touchdowns for him in this one game. So add another touchdown and touchdown pass for that matter. He has thrown six already in this one. Amazing stuff. Myers now to add the PAT. The kick is good. And the Seahawks have taken a four-point advantage. So now playing with the lead after that fourth quarter touchdown. Time to kick it back the other way. Here is Bell on the return. And he'll work this one past the 25 to right about the 28-yard line. Brandon Ayuk heading back onto the field with his 49er teammates. And he's had some kind of game. They made it a point to get him involved early. Boy, did that pay great dividends to this point. First and ten. From the gun, it's Purdy. Through the air, connecting with Debo. And that keeps him ahead of schedule. That's a first down completion of seven yards. Here's second and three to go. From the shotgun, it's Purdy. And he'll be taken down. The gain is six, and it's a new set of downs. He picked up the first down. Of the gun. It's Purdy. Oh, and a short throw there, but it's going to end up incomplete. That's a pass he say he should have had. Instead, he does not, and it brings up second down. This is one of those situations that plays directly into the hands of the defense because think, Mike, they know this offense has to be one dimensional. This has to be a pass. So, what do they do? They bring in extra defensive backs, they clog up the back end, and at the end of the day, there's just nowhere for the offense to go with the ball. He's into the clear again. And they bring him down there, but it is inside the 10. It is going to be first and goal. They'll drop to throw to the goal line and in. 
touchdown 49ers and he continues to remain on fire that is a rare NFL day five touchdown passes thrown and Mike at this point the defense just looks completely lost out there I mean they have no answers whatsoever giving up the fifth touchdown pass of this ball game an important extra point up and good so the lead is three here in the late stages of the game So now playing with the lead after that fourth quarter touchdown. Time to kick it back the other way. Here's Williams on the return. And he is stopped at the 25. The drive will begin there. The Seahawks offense and their running back getting set for this next possession. This one has been tight so far. A field goal separating the two sides as this drive kicks off with first and ten. Three tight ends in the game to start the drop. A first down throw for Smith. Into the hands of his tight end, Barner. Outbreaking routes, Mike, especially outside of the numbers. Everything is about the timing. If you're late with the throw, you're going to be watching that defensive back take that thing the other way for six. Second and six coming up. From the shotgun, it's Smith. He'll get this complete to Walker. And he's not going to be able to get away. Very good coverage on the perimeter. It goes down as a loss of yards. I think this play is a direct result of his film study. He knew exactly where that ball was going before the play was snapped. And that play recognition, man, it separates a lot of guys in this league and results in a negative play. That ball is caught on the sideline and both feet inbounds. A big third down pickup for a first down. A gain of 15 and a first down. This is why the timing of these routes is so critical. If that ball is thrown a little bit later, he's unable to keep his feet inbounds, but instead the quarterback is on time and accurate, and the receiver does a nice job not only securing the catch, but ensuring that both feet remain in bounds. He runs with it. And they're going to work this down inside the 45. Now Seattle going to use the first of their timeouts. They get the stoppage with 65 seconds remaining. Plenty of time, plus two timeouts at their disposal. It's first and ten. Working out of the gun, Smith. Connected with the tight end, that's it. And they bring him down inside the 25-yard line. It's like a textbook, methodical, efficient NFL drive. Four for four, throwing the ball, mixing in some run. You're just marching the ball downfield at your will, and they get a fresh set of downs now to see if they can convert this nice drive into some points. Timeout Seahawks. That is their second, and they'll stop it with a little over 30 left in the game. Here's second down. They go play action with Smith. 
they'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. Nice example there, Mike, of the quarterback just being smart with the ball, understanding it didn't quite develop the way he had intended. Throw that ball out of harm's way, live to play another down. Going to need a big play now, third down and long. On the bootleg, it's Smith. A toss, left side, caught by his running back. Now Seattle will use the final timeout. And the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds to go. So the pressure's on. Here's the veteran. Jason Myers. This to potentially send us to overtime. The Niners will use the first of their timeouts. And the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds to go. So the pressure's on. Here's the veteran, Jason Myers. This one, he's got to have. This one is on target, and it is good. They have tied things up here in the final minute. And that's just a big-time kick right there. I mean, think about all the things running through this kicker's head. He knows if he misses it, this game's over. But he's cool. He's calm. He steps up, takes a deep breath, and he knocks it through to extend this game. So, not much time remaining to get something started. All tied here, late fourth, as the kickoff comes. Samuel, going to see what he can do. Across the 20, they'll mark him down before the 25-yard line. And that's where the offense will take over. This is first and 10. Give a tight end motioning left here. Mason. Finding room at the 35. And this will wind up a Niners first down as the tackle's made at the 36. He'll let one go downfield for Jennings. And that's going to be incomplete. They took one last chance here in regulation. It does not pan out. And we are headed to overtime. Four quarters could not determine a winner. We get back underway here in overtime. Here is Bell on the return. He'll work his way across the 25-yard line. Here's the San Francisco offense, ready to take possession of the ball once more. They'll see if they can put something together here, beginning with first and ten.
So Kittle comes in motion. Into the secondary, past the 40. And he'll be taken down as he takes it just shy of midfield. Big hole up the middle. The interior of this offensive line did a great job clearing some space. The back saw it quick, and he hit it. And next thing you know, he was in the secondary for a big pickup. The break the huddle coming up now for first and ten. Man in motion here is Jennings. Now a first throw here in overtime. It's pretty evident, Mike, when a quarterback and his wide receiver are operating on the exact same page. The anticipation, the timing, the accuracy of the both the route and the ball. And when they're working together like this, that's the definition of teach tape. So Kittle comes in motion. There's that man again. Another catch. And they'll take this down inside the 35. This is what every offense looks to do, Mike. They want to attack the middle of the field. That's the most valuable real estate in football. And oftentimes, that's where the chunk plays come. Give it to your receiver on the move and let them do the rest. Purdy now. He'll throw on first down. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. He decides to go with the safe throw and throws it well short of the sticks. And at this level, Mike, you just can't miss layups like that. Here's Purdy again. That's Ayuk with it on the left side. And they'll work this Close to a first down, maybe just a tad short. And that last throw will be the one that does it. He has now set the NFL record, most passing yards in a single game. They'll look to pick this up third and a yard. So Kittle comes in motion. On third and one, here's Purdy. And the defense can't come up with a stop there. Gain a seven and a first down. Well, so often we see quarterbacks standing in the pocket, holding it, seeing if they can create something downfield. Well, not that play. That play was simple. Snap the ball to the quarterback, spit it out into the hands of your receiver, and let's see what he can do. So Kittle comes in motion. Now give up the middle. Lane fills quickly. Only managed to get this to the 14. Second down and eight. They'll put one of the tight ends in motion. This is caught at the two. And the Niners are going to have a first and goal coming up as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They clearly have a mismatch in their favor, and every time they've looked his way, he's continued to make big plays. If I'm this coordinator. I think I'm giving him one more shot and see if he can push this thing over the goal line and come away with six. They'll try to run this one in. And he's into the end zone. That'll do it. They win it in OT. A lot of big bodies down there, but at the end of the day, the one that mattered, the one with the ball, finds the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, once that back gets the ball, Mike, he's just looking for a little crack of daylight, and he's thinking, I'm going to run into it and just hope I come out the other side. And in this case, the other side's the end zone, and they get six.
So, thanks to that recent rule change, still the chance to extend this game and match that opening overtime score as they receive the kickoff here. And a decent return there. He'll get this up just shy of the 30. Out comes the Seattle offense as they get ready for their next possession. They trail here by a touchdown as this drive will start with a first down. From the gun, it's Gino. That is knocked away. Incomplete. Good coverage there defensively. All over him. And it'll be second down. Well, not exactly breaking news here, Mike. They got speed on the perimeter that just not a lot of teams in the NFL have. So even though that ball falls incomplete, I think they have to continue to do it. Continue to pressure this defense and make them defend the entire field. Because as they're worried about him running by them, there is a lot of space open underneath. Even though it doesn't result in a sack, when you dial up the right pressure at the right time, Mike, sometimes that's all it takes to lead to that incompletion. The timing is just a little off between the quarterback and his intended target, and the ball falls incomplete. Smith from the gun on third down. Got a man. It's rocket. And they will bring him down on the other side of midfield. This is clinic tape for any young wide receiver out there watching this guy run routes. He has the defender thinking everything is a go ball. Attack him vertically, and then when you get to your route depth, you stick that foot in the ground, you break in, balls on time, results in a nice first down pickup. They'll come up here first and ten. Throwing is Smith. A throw left side there, not going to find the target. Incomplete. Jackson, Smith, and Jigba, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up second down. He's already been a little reckless with his decision-making up until this point, Mike, and now it almost backfires on him again. He has to do a better job of finding the matchups, finding the space on the field so everything is not a forced ball into these tight windows. He's going to tuck it and go. Can't beat those legs. 13-yard pickup. A scramble leads to a first down. You know, Mike, I like everything about this play except the very end. You've already picked up good yardage. You've already picked up the first down. Now get down on the ground and protect yourself. There's no reason to take those shots. On first down, here's Gino to throw. This one finds Lockett down the left side. And they will take him down at the 20-yard line. Gino now on first and ten. That is caught. He got it. And that's a game winner here in overtime. So yet another celebration. And this one has a little bit of history with it. He has set the NFL record the most receiving touchdowns in a single game. They could have tried for the win. Instead, they'll go for one to extend the game. And an exhale there. Extra point is good. Now, next score wins as we play on here in overtime.
So back to level after the touchdown and time for the kickoff. Samuel, going to see what he can do. He'll get this up to the 28-yard line. Nice place for the drive to start. The Niners' offense make their way out to take over once more. They'll start out first down and 10. They'll start this one with a three tight end look. On the ground is Mason. And he finds a little bit of space. He'll take this forward for a gain of four. Here's second and six. A run. And here's Mason. He'll get about three. And that's going to lead to third down. Third down. Three to go. Throwing from the gun is Purdy. And he's going to have the first down. It is a gain of six. Good conversion on third down. Mike, I think we make so much of all these fancy routes, right? The selling, the head fakes, getting in and out of the break. And while that's really important to create separation, that's really more of a man beater. That's when teams want to just play you one-on-one -on -one and you have to beat the defender. Against zone defense, like we saw here, it's a lot more simpler. Understand the concept of the play. Understand where the holes in the defense are. And get there and be friendly to the quarterback. And if you're open, stay open. That's NFL route running. That's what the best guys do. Throwing with anticipation, it not only requires the confidence in both your accuracy and the timing, but it also forces the receiver to be on time and where the quarterback expects you to be. And... This is one of those examples, man. When those two things are on point, it results in a first down. Handoff here, up the middle. The hole closes quickly. He'll pick up about three. They face second down and seven. One of the tight ends in motion right. Back to the ground. He'll get it again. And it'll be a pickup of three. So third down, forthcoming. put him down right at the 20 but they'll also move the sticks that is a first down picked up I like the element of surprise here Mike it seemed like everyone was so keyed elsewhere on the play that nobody even gave a thought to him potentially getting the run didn't take him long to see he was going to be able to clearly pick up that first down timeout Seahawks that is their second So, Jake Moody on in this big situation. This one to win it in overtime. This kick is good. He got it. It took overtime, but they will walk off the field with the victory. So, a win here for our visitors, the 49ers. This was a close-fought game. They were able to get themselves into field goal range here at OT. 
the final kick sailed through the uprights to finally close out this victory. And that'll do it for my partner, Greg Olson. For our entire team, I'm Mike Tirico. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. And with that, we say good night from Seattle.